Five things that St. Jose Maria Escriva has to say about money and more. Join us in today's episode. Jonathan here. As we were editing this episode, we realized that my microphone, for whatever reason, was not working and was just putting in static. So we've edited the the audio well enough off of Amanda's microphone uh, to get me from far away. Uh, it might sound, you know, a little bit weird, not as good as usual, but our conversation we thought was so good, we didn't want to have to kind of redo it again and have it just not be as good. So this is as good as I'm going to sound on this episode, but I think we were able to get it to a definitely a listenable level. But just want to give you the heads up there. Thank you for your generosity, for your kindness, for your, uh, your grace that you're extending us on the audio here. Thank you. Hoo-hoo-hoo! We have got an episode today. Mm. Oh my goodness. We are reading from one of my most very favorite books, The Way, which is a collection of isms. <laughs> uh, in, from, punches in the butt. Yeah, punches in the gut, whatever you want to call it, from St. Jose Maria Escriva. Um, and these have been, a, it's a collection of a sentence or two, just snippets, you know, from either lectures he gave or correspondence that he had with spiritual directees. And the first time that I read this, you can even see inside of it, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, um, some things that we had in here, we we actually had it mapped out how to walk through the book as we read the way, as we walked the way, or the Camino de Santiago, which is walking across Spain, one of the most, one of the top three pilgrimages in the Catholic world. Uh, you know, you have Rome, the Holy Land, and the Camino. The Camino at the end of it is um, where St. James is buried. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to get into that, but I remember the first time I read this little book with all its little spiritual drop kicks, I was thankful that it was little isms because I was reading it as I was walking. Walking, 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 walking. We literally walked almost a marathon every day <laughs> for weeks. It was glorious. I do remember suffering a lot while we were on it, but now I have rose-colored glasses and I see it only for the good, right? As tends to be most things in our lives. But I remember um, just so much fruit coming from this. So when Lent came around this year, I thought, you know, it's been a while. I think the last time I had perused through the old The Way was pre-kiddo. Oh, wow. Yeah. And our oldest is almost eight now. So I thought for Lent, I'm going to dive back into this bad boy and we're just going to see what fruits come. And so. And you've been, you've been picking it's, some fruit. Yeah, Jonathan, you know, I think a common occasion for you in the last couple of months has been me sitting in my prayer chair with my cup of coffee that you most graciously bring to me. You. <laughs> and you'll just hear me begin laughing. Yes. Hysterically. Hysterically. And then he just nailed you. He just nailed me. <laughs> or he, you know, he just he just says it like it is. Uh I don't know what his temperament was, but I'm almost certain he was a melancholic choleric mm -hmm. with the way he has the ability to kind of cut through, um, just get to the junk underneath and say it really directly. Mm -hmm. He's thought about <laughs> it, I'll tell you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's a very good book. Little fire and brimstoney, but Honestly, sometimes it's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Not always. There's times and places, but um, yeah. So we are going to read a few of the nuggets in here because uh, every now and again, I'd come across one that was related to money mm -hmm. and he had something to say about it. Uh, and of course, these are personal thoughts and revelations, but we're going to read these little isms and then discuss how we might apply that into our everyday real life uh, because... It's nice to hear about things in theory, but then we're going to put some flesh on it as far as how it could look now. Let's do this thing. So without further ado, let's do it. Also, one last thing to note for St. Jose Maria Escriva. Um, many people I feel like have known his name through maybe Opus Dei. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he was part of that. 
Okay. All right. The first one we are going to read is 487. I'm just taking them um, in order. numerically. So each of these little little guys is, is numbered in the book. So mm-hmm. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of them. Yes. So here's number 487. Ooh. Ooh. And they're all just like, ah, so good. Okay. Number 487. Don't worry about the financial difficulties in store for your apostolic undertaking. Have greater confidence in God. Do all that your human means permit. And you'll see soon how money ceases to be a difficulty. Ooh. So what are you thinking? Well, what do you think? I'm That's a, sick. I've been the one. That one was all along. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much of an ism. So essentially, yeah, the principle underneath this, and I'll just keep it open so you can kind of relook at it as we chat. Um, but you know, I think sometimes it's easy to get bent out of shape when we enter into a season or a stage of maybe financial stress or pressure. Mm -hmm. And now there's one thing of having it be self brought on through poor money management or just bad money management. Uh, That in and of itself can be fixed with financial skills and habits and tools. And that's the stuff we excel in. Mm -hmm. And that's what we teach. But in one way or another, I think... Every person, every family, every apostolate will reach a place of financial stress. There'll be something you could where, you know, the buck just won't stretch far enough for where the vision is going. And there's a tension there. And so I this um, I love this because he stresses a couple different things too, two really trusting and having confidence that, hey, I might be looking at the numbers and pff, this doesn't make sense. I don't know how this is going to work, but God will just blow through a wall and make it happen. So, <laughs> so yes. having that, mm-hmm. but you're not sitting on your duff. You are, he says, do all that your human means permit. So your skills, your intellect, your talents, you're learning everything you possibly can and doing what it is that you can. So you're staying in motion and then if necessary, God could break a wall down or he might just bring a, a, an opportunity to you right in, to, in alignment with some of those actions that you're doing or some of the skills you're acquiring. Mm-hmm. And so that marrying of the two of them, well, pff, pretty soon the money stuff will take care of itself. Yeah. And I think you could read this and it talks about, the, you know, don't worry about the financial difficulties in store for your apostolic undertaking. And you could definitely see that as. A ministry, sure. Some sort of a, a formal apostolate, you know, some some very direct work that that you're doing. But I'd say it can also apply to family life. Absolutely, I mean, that is in many ways for most of us the primary way which we are sharing the gospel and making disciples is through our children. And so, and I think if you're approaching your family in that as life, an apostolate, then mm-hmm. yeah, certainly. Uh, this can apply. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about the financial difficulties. Mouths to feed goes up in number. The dollar seems to be inflating and shrinking beneath your very eyes. <laughs> 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 and many of us have faced that. Uh, but having that confidence and then doing whatever we can. I was just telling, um, I was talking with a, a friend this morning. Mm-hmm. And I recalled a story about when we used to fundraise uh, our entire salary. And we had already adopted our oldest, but inside, in the recesses of our heart, we wanted to adopt again, Mm -hmm. but our oldest was only a year. So it kind of felt, I was going through all this mental gymnastics of nobody's going to want to support us again. You know, we already have one. We should just be grateful. Um, Just because I feel a pull towards this, like maybe it's not really God's will. I was just getting really mixed up in the head. Um, even though I felt these very valid pulls and tugs in prayer to just enter in the process again. And I was really mixed up about the money because we had fundraised, I'd say, a majority of what it took for our first adoption. Mm -hmm. And so I felt in my head like, oh, man, people are just sitting there thinking, oh, the Texeras, they're looking for another handout, huh? Like all these negative, terrible, untrue thoughts. Uh, 
here we are. We fundraise our income. So I had just gotten into my head to the to the most deeply incorrect degree. But a melancholic can go there real easy. We have we <laughs> Oh, a special talent for creating crises where there are none. (laughs) (laughs) But then I remember, so we're just essentially mentally wanting to do this, but we hadn't really shared it. And then out of out of the thin air, we were we were trying our best to learn what we could do to maybe better prepare ourselves, Mm -hmm. what we could do to, you know, update our home study. We were doing the. All that was within our human means, okay? We were doing the things that we could, Mm -hmm. but I was not, I didn't have confidence in God. I was lacking that. It was all self-reliance, and that was essentially where we were stuck. So, I get a message on Messenger. I'll never forget where we were. We were um, up in Estes Park, Mm. I think. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never forget. (laughs) I'll never forget. (laughs) I think we were in Estes Park. Yes, yes, we were, we were in a. Somewhere, uh, no, 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 no. Over. Yes, we were. Yes. We were in Estes Park. Okay, we were. <laughs> we were in Estes Park, um, and I got this message, and it said, "Hey, it was you know from a a friend that I'd known many years before, but hadn't seen in, in years, and we weren't." That we weren't like super close, like keeping in touch level of friends. Like we'd been a friendly acquaintances, Mm -hmm. um, known each other through a few circumstances. Anyway, it wasn't like she was messaging me every every few weeks with an update. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she said, Hey, I was in prayer recently. You know, my my spouse and I, we ended up getting a bonus and we were discerning, you know, where we want to give. Um, out of that bonus because it's not really assigned to anything. And while I was praying, you came to heart and I just thought how hard it must be to be in a position where you don't get to call the shots or have control over when you get to grow your family next. And that money stands in the way of that. And so I'd like to go ahead and give it to you to jumpstart your next adoption. Yep. (laughs) What? Okay. <laughs> okay. So here I am spinning my wheels, self-reliance, no confidence in God, but then he just cuts in, drops a bomb that says, I can put you I can put your needs on someone else's heart instantly. I can move mountains. I doesn't uh, you know, we're all in the body of Christ, we're all connected. So if I have a need, you know, it can be felt in someone else's prayer. That that's a legit thing. This is not some weird like woo woo thing Mm -hmm. this is this is the body of christ and so with that we were like okay the confidence in god and uh, repenting of that self-reliance and choosing the confidence continuing to do the human means and then all of a sudden within a couple of months not only did another situation came Mm -hmm. but a far more expensive adoption (laughs) came than our first go around but we had all the financial means to go ahead and meet that mm-hmm. with some fundraising and then some of our own savings. So I agree with him. You have that confidence and all the things that you can do, and you'll see how soon money ceases to be a difficulty. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. Next one. And they're all very different. So next is six. 31. 631. I think this is the poverty chapter. It is. Mm. So a lot of these are going to, the next three are going to deal with um, poverty. And we don't necessarily mean just having no money, but Mm. living poor in spirit. You know, Jesus tells us to live that way, to live poor in spirit. And that's a completely different concept than just material poverty. Now, some people are called to live that. But most aren't. But we can still live a, that poor in spirit, no matter what our financial situation looks like. Okay. 631. Oh, this is a burn. <laughs> Detach yourself from the goods of this world. Love and practice poverty of spirit. Be content with what is sufficient for leading a simple and temperate life. Otherwise, you'll never be an apostle. Ever. 
<laughs> Woo! Woo! All right, then. You want to see it? Yes. Uh, what he says brings to mind, uh, I read, like, the letters of St. Francis de Sales mm. a few years ago. And he's writing to this one person, and he's telling them that we should view ourselves like trees to be transplanted when we die. We're going to be taken out of this world and into the next. Hmm. And if you're going to transplant a tree like, and you don't want it to die afterwards, you need to carefully remove the soil from the world in which it's in, the earth. That's Interesting. In, to then move it to the next one. So, so he's encouraging this person hmm. he's writing to, to you know, start doing that work of, you know, disentangling your roots Ooh. from the earth. Ooh. Be ready for the transplant. So just kind of keeping your roots nice and light, mm -hmm. kind of in in the ground as so much as to get nutrients, but not a not a not a millimeter deeper. <laughs> yeah. In the world, but not of the world. Yeah. I believe as Saint Paul refers to it as. So like how he said, you know, like be content with what is sufficient mm. for leading a simple and temperate life. There's a lot of times where we i know myself included can get caught up in more i want this thing and this thing and then more of that other one and but really it's what what do we need to live not a desperate life no not a not a hard life or anything but like a, just a moderate a temperate a simple life i mean this That's this is the vir need. the virtue of temperance is yeah. supposed to be in all of the things that we interact with mm -hmm. this side of heaven I think that the 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 skin and bones of how that looks is going to be different for each of us, mm -hmm. and the level the um, kind of the level that we're called to live at, I guess, as far as what is a simple and temperate life, taking into account the size of your family, your personalities, your hobbies, things you enjoy, but always striving for that temperance yeah. is a good thing, even though it. It's worth doing the work of actually discerning what is that line for us. The temptation, you know, even let's say someone is blessed with a very high income, even so, so high, they could have all of their needs and wants met immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, they have just such a great uh, high income. As a Catholic, though, if we're keeping our roots light, we are careful to make sure just because I could do this doesn't mean I do. And just being healthy and kind of defining what those boundaries are to make sure my heart is not so firmly planted here or so firmly obsessed with this, that, or another luxury uh, or pleasure or whatever that I'm always kind of living in that, um, that weight of Advent, right? Stay awake, be ready. <laughs> don't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And I think that this um, detachment and this poor in spirit practice to strive for keeps you awake, intentionally kind of aware of the realities that are at play. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 but detach yourself from the goods of the world. No, you know, don't let don't them hang not. on to you. Don't hang on to them. Otherwise, like he says, that is going to keep you back mm -hmm. from following the Lord and saying yes and understanding what you what he's asking you to do. You're going to be the rich young man who went away sad because he chose his things over the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're going to be uh, those folks elsewhere in the gospel. You know, like oh, I got to go check out this land I just bought. Uh, you know, my uh, you know I got to do all this. You know, but my, my parents are getting old. I got to wait to bury them, and it's like just. Mm -hmm. Come after me, mm -hmm. and, and I'll take care of things that. Things will be taken care of. Yep. And again, it doesn't say um, don't have any goods. I just I feel like so so often the temptation is, uh oh, having money or things is so bad and risky. I just <laughs> fly to the spectrum of just hating it and wanting nothing to do with it because it does take difficult work to actually have, you know. Um, goods and to keep them in right relationship because of concupiscence and our disordered desires. It's kind of like, you know, when you're on a, like a harsh, crazy diet, um, restrictive diet, it's easier sometimes to just have it that way because you don't have to practice 
moderation or temperance. Uh, and if you let in even one little slip of a, you know, sugar or something, now you go completely hog wild and go overboard. <laughs> it is so much easier for me to have no candy than to have one candy. <laughs> Right. And we all have our version of that. Mm -hmm. um, but with money, you know, we have to just remember like it in and of itself isn't bad, but it takes a lot of self-discipline to make sure it stays in right relationship. Mm -hmm. We stay in right relationship with it. Yeah. And most of the things money can buy are morally neutral. Right. Exactly. It's how what our relationship is with those. Mm -hmm. Okay. 632. Ooh. It's the next one. Get far. Oh, this is good. Here we go. <laughs> True poverty is not to lack things, but to be detached, to give up voluntarily one's dominion over them. That's why some poor people are really rich and vice versa. Ooh, as in some rich people are very poor. Mm-hmm. Because their goods own them. Their money owns them. Their money defines them. They spend all their mental energy trying to think about, manage, and control the money. Mm -hmm. But you could do that be without very much at all. Or I'd say, or, or yeah. it, you know, uh, you have to be detached. You have to give up voluntarily your dominion over things that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I see this with the kids. Ooh. Very, I mean, I, so I many lessons when you watch your kids you and you see, see it. I see it in the kids very clearly. Sometimes, you know, there's a, a particular toy or crayon or whatever it is, and they're not even using it. They're nowhere near it. Across mm. the room, they see. Haven't used one the of red the other crayon and. Walking over near it. <laughs> All right, you, no, that's mine. Get away. <laughs> you aren't using it. They're not going to ruin it by them looking at it, let alone using it. Like, but they're so caught up mm. in their dominion over these things that it's stealing away their joy and their enjoyment of whatever that other thing they were playing with or doing at that other, at that moment is. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're the same thing. If, if we take, if we, we shouldn't just take the things that we have for granted. They are good gifts given to us by our yeah. father. So we shouldn't just treat our things like they're nothing. But if we're too particular about, you know, making sure there's no smudges on, you know, on the outside of my computer or that there's absolutely <laughs> no specks of dirt on the outside of the car and I'm going to get the car washed every other day or whatever it is, mm. then we are too much of our heart is invested in those things. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any, any more left to put anywhere else or to give to anyone else, let alone give to our Lord. And so, yeah, those things can take us away. When we, so we think we own them, but so many times they claim ownership over our hearts. Yeah. And so it's cultivating that poverty of spirit is just the detachment and relinquishing dominion and just understanding that you are a steward and this is here to be at you, you are part of the common good so sometimes you can you can get a handbag or something just because uh you just really enjoy the artwork or the the design or whatever like you can be the sole recipient of something beautiful that that points you you know what De in defense of my Vera Bradley bag. <laughs> oh, I remember a Vera Bradley bag that I really wanted that I sweated over. Holy. <laughs> of like, should I get this or not? And then at the end of the day, it was like, I, I feel so happy when I see the print. And it makes me think about the garden, uh, like uh, in heaven. And so I was like, yeah, I'm getting it. <laughs> Even though it was pricey ah, what was your example i was thinking i'll try to just think of you know like to give up ownership i mean a dominion over things and, and not letting them control me and all that and so i was looking around the room at things and i saw a coffee cup and it's not that particular coffee mug that i'm thinking about i was like oh, if one of somebody needed that one and then i thought back 
uh, I was, when I was, I was working for this company downtown and I go get my coffee and it was just like mugs. You just grab the mug. Right I up. remember you had a favorite. There was a favorite mug. And I, I mean, I use that thing every, oh man, I miss that mug. It was a good mug. But then I discovered it was like the chief operating officer's mug. It was her mug. She's the one who brought it in back in the day, right? It was brought all their stuff in. They all got them mixed together. And so she, I was feeling like she's, she mentioned, oh, hey, that's my mug. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so do you want it? I mean, here, do you want it? And she's like, no, you use it. It's a, you know, it's a good mug, but you know, you're using it, you love it. And I was like, and I did. And so I use that mug every day that I worked there. Mm. And it was this, and who, maybe she didn't care for it that much, like I did, but it was legitimately her. She had, she could have had mm. a claim on it and she just let me have she it. She gave that she up. She let me use it. And she was free from worrying about this mug of hers because she was just, she was free and generous with it. Mm -hmm. And we can do that truly with everything mm -hmm. that we, that we um, are given. Um, so true poverty is not to lack things. You're not poor in spirit just because you didn't have anything. That doesn't automatically mm -hmm. give you poverty of spirit. Yes, you can and be materially you, poor and not poor. In spirit. I mean, I'm sure if we had a religious come be interviewed here, I'm going to guess it takes them years, if not decades, even though they take a vow to poverty to really cultivate this poverty of spirit is the work of decades mm. because it manifests in so many ways way beyond money. Mm -hmm. Um. And so that's actually a, that's a great podcast yeah. episode idea. Let's talk about the vow of poverty with religious. Cause certainly the, the entire vow of relinquishing money is so that it cultivates other things mm -hmm. in their life. They don't do it just because not having money is cool. That's, com <laughs> that's totally missing the point and they'll explain it better. Um, but we can practice some level of this even in the laity. Mm -hmm. which I think is exciting and fun. So, well, maybe not fun, but what? exciting to be able to participate in that. Yes. Okay. 634. Oh, yeah. 633. Might as well skip that one. Right? <laughs> it, it's a doozy. Uh, I, sure it's sure. <laughs> we're not going to read it. We could read all of them, but we're not. What an attachment to the things of the world. But soon they will slip from your grasp. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's 634. Um, I know, but I was, it wasn't supposed to be that one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was supposed to be 635. All right. <laughs> that was a good one, but it's this one. Mm. Okay. All right, 635. My bad. You don't have the spirit of poverty if you don't select for yourself what is worst. When you are able to choose in such a way that it will not be noticed. Ooh, that's good. Oh, two, this one hurts here. so good. There is choosing the worst for yourself. Ooh. So, you know, picking, and it depends, I guess, on your preferences, but right when the cookies come out of the oven. I had this battle the other night. You did. Oh, you yeah. Experience. Oh, Please. man. It was so hard. I made these delicious gluten-free <laughs> chocolate chip cookies for our family day o fun. And they came out and they were all fresh. Uh -huh. And you were over on the couch. Uh, and we, you and Jonathan and I were going to, we made them the night before, but we were going to sneak one, you know? Yeah, we're going to have a cookie. We're going to have a cookie. Yeah. I looked at the tray. They were all, they're all hot, gooey, delicious looking. Uh -huh. Uh and I saw the shrimp, the shrimpy, <laughs> smallest ball of dough, least, least chunk of chips. Um, and then I saw the best, you know, the best mm -hmm. looking one. Mm -hmm. And this shows Amanda's lack of virtue. I, I brought you the best. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought you were giving me the shrimpy. <laughs> but listen, but listen. <gasps> Wait, but I then selected the second, second best. best. Oh, <laughs> fail. Um, and so yeah, 
<laughs> Let's go ahead and just reveal that. It there was it yeah, yeah, yeah. the work the, the laborer is worth his wage, right? I mean, I did put the work in and then the next day I didn't I let you give me whatever cookie. Got it. I relinquished anyway, but if I That would have been a great opportunity. It would have been an amazing I didn't like I didn't sin. By picking, you missed a chance. I missed a chance to practice a deeper spirit of poverty. Mm. To be, to be honest, I'm not going to beat myself up over that. I'm not taking it to confession. That is scrupulosity. Hello, <laughs> but I missed a chance to grow, Ooh. and I knew it in the moment. Oh, that's well, even worse. You I might be getting this <laughs> in that case. You saw a spiritual good and you decided not to do it. Ah, okay, let's talk. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that to wow. spiritual direction. Man, what, 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 a, what a gift that I decided to say cookies from the oven <laughs> as my example. It was my That's angel serious. probably prodded you because <laughs> he knew I needed to take this one up. <laughs> oh, youchers. So there's, so there's the two things there. There's the... Pick the worst for yourself. And then there's a whole other layer to it after that. When it can't be noticed. Is that what you're going to note? Yes. So if if you bring out the cookies Mm. in front of us all, and and maybe, I mean, especially if it's very clear there is a shrimp, like he's half the size. Broken. He's a total loser cookie. And there's like 15 cookies or whatever. And you pick that one. That's a little noticeable. Right. It's still good, I'd say, depending why you're doing it, I guess. If you don't want everybody to, to know me that you're so spiritual and don't even need <laughs> nice cookies, um, then this may be not that great. But it could still be fine. Um, but doing it before they come over, doing it in secret. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's good. I mean, and now I'm carrying this over and I'm like, oh my goodness, all the opportunities. I'll admit, like sometimes I'll, I share food with our toddler who's three and sometimes I'll give her the crappier thing because she's three and can't tell the difference between the good piece of bread and the heel. You know, she just isn't there yet, but I'm just like feeling that pierce of like, Mm. I, I take the better one. And I give her the worst because she just doesn't know she's getting raked over the coals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now I have some room to grow. She's going to get something good at dinner tonight. <laughs> Everybody is. Except you. <laughs> <laughs> you. Don't let me know. But yeah, I think that this is this is tough. I mean, this can be a really, really, this is a tough teaching. I could hear some people. And again, does this mean you can't have anything good or nice. It isn't. You don't just, this is a, a, a private revelation conversation in, in a unique time, in a unique way. But we do have kind of these maxims, if you will, as our call that are part of our life as disciples. And so how we live them out can vary and differ. But living discipleship's really hard and it asks a lot, but it gives everything. What? Also, there's a lot of room in, 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 for interpretation of how you like live this out. Absolutely. You are totally living this out by eating the runt cookie. So you still get a cookie. It's not like give Jonathan the best cookie and then you eat a bowl of moldy ketchup. Like that's not what it says. No. It's not saying, you know, make sure the dog licks your cookie five times before you eat it. You don't, it's it's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's It's tough. It's tough. We live in a world, you know, where they shout self-care, self-care, self-care. You deserve it. Spoil yourself. Um, You earned it. Kind of these maxims, which they actually don't, they don't hold up when you look at discipleship and the call that Jesus, he says, Pick up your cross and follow me. We have we have the cross and the gospel. I mean, <laughs> those are our standards. It's not, you know, pour a bubble bath because you deserve it. Pour a bubble bath. Take care of your body so you continue can continue being a fruitful uh, disciple right, in the world. Cross up <laughs> exactly. And so the the way of disciples is foolishness 
to those who are perishing. St. Paul talks about this. We look like fools. We look like idiots Mm -hmm. to those who don't understand it. But when you do, and you know what you're uniting yourself to, and how Jesus says anybody who gives up, you know, houses or uh, wives or children or anything, anything we give up for him, He gives you back what? He says a hundredfold. You try getting that ROI anywhere else. (laughs) He has, he's good on his promise. And so if I'm going to select the runt cookie and no one's going to notice, he noticed and he's getting me back a hundred times. So really, if I was spiritually mature, I'd actually have more pleasure in that instead of the second best cookie. Mm! <laughs> that my old bag of bones wants to get its hands on. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else on that one? No, I just can't wait for the next time you make some cookies. Uh, I'm going to make sure every... I'm not the one I'm gonna, it out of the oven. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to use a weighted scale to make sure they're all the exact amount of ounces. And so there won't be... <laughs> <laughs> They're all good. Okay. The next one is 708. And this is the last one. And I think it touches a little bit on what we were just chatting about. Okay. Okay. The world, the devil, and the flesh are a band of adventurers who take advantage of the weakness of the savage you have within you in exchange for the poor bobble of pleasure which is worth nothing, they want you to hand over to them the pure gold and the pearls, the diamonds and the rubies, drenched in the living and redeeming blood of your God, the price and the treasure of your eternity. Wow. Dang. Mm. And that's the final one. We're ending on that one because it is it's a heavy, heavy, heavy hitter. Mm-hmm. It brings back the like, I don't want to gain the whole oh, world yeah. and lose my soul. Uh, of just like, we teach about personal finance. We talk about money all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think it can be easy sometimes to view money as the end instead of the means. And to think that wealth is in money and that how much we have or don't have is the representative of our real worth. We talk about net worth. Mm. And I think sometimes it can be easy to confuse those as the standards of our success, how well we've done in life, how influential we are, how smart we are, how powerful we are. But they are... Nothing but hot air and dust when you compare them to the riches that we receive in Christ. Mm -hmm. Our salvation is the riches. Remember the selling of the pearl? Buying of the pearl. The buying of the pearl. I I, I, I mix things. Sells the field to buy the pearl. Sells the field to buy the pearl. Or sells everything he has to buy the field to get the pearl. Yes, the pearl of great price. Sorry. Um, Pearls okay. are not in the field. He sell, <laughs> there's two of them. One We're sells the field to buy a pearl, I think. Okay, we just need to stop. We've screwed this up. Sells to buy a field that has something in it. <laughs> Go read the actual passages. Go read the Bible. <laughs> We have now, <laughs> we butchered in our heads. Um, <laughs> but our world is literally designed to tell us that the things that really have no value, our world is barking at us that those are the only things of value. And that if you don't have these or have a way to get these, you're worthless and you have nothing. And well, we teach we teach stewardship and smart money strategies and principles, and we stand behind that all day long. We would never teach somebody, though, to become so engrossed in that that they have forgotten what the pearl of great price was, what the gold and the pearls, the diamonds and the rubies were, their eternal salvation. That trumps everything. And so whatever money situation you ever find yourself in in life, if it ever is threatening the actual goal, where's that sign? 
We have a sign back there. For those watching on YouTube, Jonathan's grandfather hung the sign. What does it say? It says, real success is ending up in heaven. Absolutely. And so just do not get confused about real wealth. It has nothing to do with money. It really doesn't. And don't listen to anybody else who's going to try to tell you differently. Money is a means. It's not an end. Bingo. Boom. There it is. <laughs> also, that sign, it's just, it's great because his grandfather didn't have um, like internet. He had no internet. Or, no. I think no. He, he just typed this up. And printed it on yellow paper. I think so. I don't know what he did. Or, yeah, I don't know. And then he got, went and got it framed. <laughs> he went and got it framed. And, and honestly, your grandfather, I'm like, he's, he's um, you know, this spitting image of just like what an amazing disciple looks yeah. like to live a long life focused on Christ. Mm -hmm. He won the race. Yeah. He did well. He did well. Pray for us. Amen. Bill Bailey, pray for us. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> anyway, you want to round us out here? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if this is, what was this? Was five of. Five little isms. Five of, well, I think it's a thousand in here. Uh, if you don't have a copy of this, you should check it out. It's a little guy. Um, keep it in your pocket, The Way by San Jose Maria Escriva. And uh, we'll I mean, just have it in the show like, notes. He'll, yeah, he'll he'll kick your butt, slap your face, poke you in the eye because he loves you, you. Uh, all day long with these little things. Uh, and so it's very helpful. And you can look at these and, and there's so many that will touch your, your finances, touch your relationships, touch all sorts of things in your mm. life. So we definitely recommend uh, checking out the way as you make your way through life. <laughs> bada bing bada boom thank you for joining us for this episode of the wallow in podcast as we work our way through the catholicism and money series we've been having such a good time doing this series we can't wait for all the episodes that are yet to come mm -hmm. we've got some goodies just waiting for you so if you uh are enjoying the content that we have been creating uh if you're watching on youtube could you go ahead and subscribe and give us the thumbs up and then what? Smash that like button, hit <laughs> I, subscribe, with the bell for notifications. I don't know all the terms, <laughs> but if you are listening to this on a as a podcast, if you could go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review, is that it? Yes, that'd be very helpful. Okay, or uh, wherever else you might be able to leave a review, but they're certainly the big one there. And share the podcast with a friend, even an enemy. Yeah, uh, I still love them too. <laughs> Uh, so you can tell them to check it out at walletwin.com slash podcast. Just have them search podcast or search walletwin in their podcast app. Until next time. Bye for now.